Today, I'm gonna to show you five workflow hacks in DaVinci Resolve that are going to blow your mind. Let's take a look. People who know me will always say that I am a super busy guy. I'm constantly working, but not just on this YouTube channel. I also have things that I do outside of YouTube. I'm also a dad, a boyfriend, I got a house to take care of, bills to pay. I'm a busy guy. I got a lot on my plate. And so when I am making videos, I'm always looking for ways to make things faster, whether that's doing a little extra step in pre-production or changing up my filming techniques or even things in the video editing process, which we're talking about today. I'm gonna show you five things that I do when I'm editing videos that seriously speed up my workflow and make things just a lot easier. So without further ado, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look. My first tip is to use power bins. Power bins are bins just like your master bins or your smart bins, but these power bins can actually share footage and effects and fusion templates and all sorts of stuff across every single one of your projects in DaVinci Resolve. So if you have a title that you use in every one of your videos, like the one that you saw at the beginning of this video, you can drop that title, that fusion template into a power bin. And instead of having to re-import it into every project, you can just open up your power bins, drag it into your timeline and be done. Now by default, DaVinci Resolve doesn't come with the power bins option activated. So in order to activate that, you wanna go up to your top menu and go to view, and just click on show power bins. And you can see I've got my titles here. I can just click on titles. I've got blur and grow, which is that title that you saw in the beginning. You can just grab that and drop it into my timeline. Tip number two is to use an option called selection follows playhead. And this is an option that will make it so whatever clip your playhead is over is the clip that's selected, which is super important for me because I'm constantly, especially in tutorials, zooming in and panning left and right and moving things around. And sometimes I have my playhead at like the end of the timeline and I'm thinking I'm working on the clip that the playhead is over when in reality, the clip at the beginning of the timeline is what's selected and then I'm screwing up my keyframes and making things all weird and I gotta go back and redo it and it's just a pain in the butt. So when I found this particular setting, I was super excited. In order to activate selection follows playhead, we just wanna go up to that top menu again, hit timeline and go down to selection follows playhead and now you'll see that no matter where I put my playhead, the clip that is underneath it is what's selected. Tip number three is to use adjustment clips. Now adjustment clips are empty clips that you put in your timeline above your original footage and then whatever edits you do to those adjustment clips will show in your original footage. That may actually sound a little bit confusing now that I say it out loud. So let me just show you how to do it. In order to use adjustment clips, all you wanna do is go over to your effects library. You're gonna make sure you're in effects. You're gonna grab an adjustment clip and you're gonna drag that on to your timeline. And what I'm gonna do here is create a little bit of a screen pump transition. You guys may remember that video. I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna go back two frames. I'm gonna set a keyframe move over one frame. I'm gonna bring that zoom up to two. I'm gonna move over another keyframe, set a keyframe, and then move over one more keyframe and go back down to one. And now what I wanna do, just for good measures, I'm gonna set a marker right in the middle of that adjustment clip and I'll show you why in just a second. This is gonna be pretty cool. So now if we play that through, we've got a nice little screen bump transition. And the really cool thing about adjustment clips is let's say I wanna do that same transition later on in the timeline. What I can do is just hold down Alt on that adjustment clip and I can drag it over. It'll make a copy, line that marker up with the cut. And now I've got the same thing here. And a really quick pro tip, if something like that, or maybe a particular color grade or something, you know, along those lines is something that you would use across multiple projects, you can drag those adjustment clips into your power bins and then you can use them in any project without having to recreate them. 
My next tip is to use output blanking. So let's say you were working on a timeline, it was a short film, and you wanted to make it look like a film. You want it to have that nice widescreen, you know, cinematic black bar type of thing. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll go through and they'll crop out each individual frame or they'll highlight a bunch of clips and they'll crop it that way or they'll even drag a PNG file of those black bars into the timeline but there is a much easier way all you have to do is go up to timeline come down to output blanking and then choose your crop factor and now you've got nice cinematic black bars my next tip is to use a feature called fade to playhead. Now there's two options for this. There's fade into playhead and fade out to playhead. And basically what you do is just set your playhead where you want your fade to start or end and you can hit a button and it'll fade in your clip to the playhead or it will fade your clip out from the playhead. So let's jump in and I'll show you how to do that because it's super, super easy. All you do is place your playhead exactly where you want it to be. You make sure your clip is selected. And since we have selection follows playhead selected, it was automatic. And then what we're going to do is come up to trim and we're going to hit fade into playhead. And then if we go to the end of the timeline and let's say we want to end this clip on a fade, we can come back and we can go back to trim and we can hit fade out to playhead. And now our clips fade out from the playhead, they fade into the playhead. It's super quick, super easy, and you can really dial in your fade exactly how you want it. Quick bonus tip for you is to use audio presets. Now I did a whole video on this before and it'll save you a ton of time. So if you wanna learn more about that, make sure you check out this video right here. And if you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.